I want to say thank you uh, for the invitation today. Uh, it is very good to be here this morning. Uh, I count it a privilege to be able to worship with my neighbors. Uh, I live next to Jackie. Uh, when we moved into the neighborhood 15 years ago, uh, Jackie was worried about what kind of neighbors uh, she was going to get. <laughs> now, Jackie's never heard me preach at church before. But I know she's had her window open and heard me preach at my kids. <laughs> Have you not? Okay. She's not a spy. She's not a nosy neighbor. Well, yeah, she is. <laughs> I only tell that because I, I love her. She's sent, every time my kids go in there, they come back with things they don't need. Uh, candy, and then they... Stay up till midnight at night. It keeps me awake too. But it's good to be here this morning. Uh, we appreciate the music, uh, the songs, uh, the testimonies. Uh, we could go on today and say it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. Because uh, God showed up this morning. And we appreciate you all being here. And I will try to uh, notice you guys in the balcony up there too today as well. If you got your Bibles and uh, the Lord laid this on our heart as we thought about today. And uh, we didn't call, uh, Stan is the one who called us and invited us. We didn't call him and tell him what we were preaching on uh, so he could tell Trey. Uh, God had laid this on our heart to turn the book of John chapter 14. Uh, John chapter 14 this morning. Uh, it's a very familiar uh, passage of scripture. Uh, we don't come with anything new. Uh, we come with the gospel. Uh, Paul told in his writings he wasn't... I think he was a very eloquent man. He was a very learned man, a very wise man in the scriptures. He said, I come to you with Jesus Christ, and I come to you with the cross. And that's all I have to give you today is the cross. I have to give you Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins, to give us life and to give us eternal life. But John chapter 14 today, verse number 1, uh, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Uh, if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. <coughs> Thomas said to him, Lord, we know not whither you goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Let's bow our hands in prayer. Father, we thank you today. Thank you for being so good to us. We love you. We praise you. And we give you all the honor and the glory today. God, we want to ask you to bless your word. Bless your people today. Uh, bless this congregation, Father, uh, in this community to be a bright light for you. To share the love of Jesus Christ uh, to the lost and dying world. We thank you. For already being here. Uh, you don't dwell within these walls, Father. You dwell in our hearts. And your people came to worship you today. So you showed up. May you bless your word this morning. Bless whatever words you give us to be an encouragement to somebody. We pray these things in Christ's name. And amen. All right. Uh, John chapter 14. This is Jesus makes his sixth I am statement. Uh, you follow the book of John. Uh, John centers uh, around Jesus' teachings about him being God. I am. Uh, if anybody ever asks me, well, I've never read the Bible before. Uh, this is my Lord. Thank you. Make sure you don't drink that. Okay. Make sure you don't drink that. But, uh, uh, but John centers around Jesus being the I am of God. Uh, John centers also around uh, blind men. Experience of meaning Christ, and God opened his eyes, and how the Pharisees got upset with that, about that because it was on the Sabbath day. We understand this. If anybody ever asks me, well, I've never read the Bible before, where should I start? I point them at the book of John. Uh, it's, a, it's a book of love because God is love. Now, there's hard stuff in this book. Uh, there's hard stuff, there's hard things in here that you have to deal with. Uh, Jesus speaks about sin in every book, John's not in, in, excluded from that either. We find though he makes his sixth I am statement. And we'll deal with verse uh, number six today and maybe a couple other passages that God has laid in my heart. But he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
And I'm going to paraphrase. You can't get to God except going through Jesus Christ. There's no other way. You can't buy your way in there. Uh, you can't have mama and daddy pray for you to get into there. Uh, you can't go because your wife's a Christian. You can't go because your husband's a Christian. You can't get there except going through Jesus Christ. So look at the way. Uh, in the early church, in Paul's day, uh, Peter's day, uh, the, the Christians, uh, their belief system was very Jewish in nature. Uh, they continued to worship on the Sabbath at the tabernacles and the temple. They'd go there. Then they'd worship on Sunday as well. Uh, but they worship, it seems like, all week long. Because in Acts, you find that God added to the church, not weekly, but daily, such as who should be saved. He became known as the way. When Paul later went to Jerusalem after his third missionary journey, uh, he's there, he's caught in, in the temple there. Uh, they blaspheme his name, uh, lie about him, and they're about to tear him apart. Paul finally gets an opportunity to speak. And he mentions that word way in the scriptures. He was called the way. Now, it wasn't a very uh, nice term either. Uh, they thought it was the way of destruction, the Jews did. Uh, Romans later would believe the same thing, thought the Christians were uh, a pagan society, a blind society, going to wipe them out. But the way, we find Jesus says, I am the way. He's the only way to God. We, we, we desire to be with God. You, you, sung, you sung earlier, uh, you've got a mansion in heaven, and you're ready to go there. I'm ready to go to heaven today. If today's the last message that I preach, I'm ready to go to Jesus. But you know what? I know people that are lost. I know people that are lost, and I want to see saved before I'm gone. But I understand that. I understand this. But I don't save anybody. No pastor you've ever had, no pastor you ever will have, saves anybody. Jesus is the one who saves. He's the way. He's the way. Not me, not anybody else. He's the way. He's the way to God. He's the way to a holy life. Everybody wants to be better today than they were yesterday, right? We met some old friends today talking about our kids and uh, Gabby looked at Hannah and says, are you Hannah? Yeah. Gabby hadn't seen Hannah since Hannah was very little. And the adults, we don't grow up anymore and look better than what we used to. We look worse than what we used to, right? We all want to be better, though, spiritually. We all want to be better, knowledgeable people in life as we get older. Understand this. Jesus is the only way to a holy life. Now, if you want to get in shape, uh, I had to remind myself what Rick's name was because I got the other Rick. Rick. That Rick has pulled me out of the ditch before. Uh, okay? This Rick I've played basketball against before. Okay? And he's not any good, and I'm not any good either. Okay? So we just, we just, we, it's okay. We did fine there, all right? So he's just got high. Okay? I don't have high. The only way to a holy life. If you want to get in fit, you get a personal trainer. You join a gym, right? You spend a lot of money, waste a lot of money, most likely, right? In the gym, personal trainer. Now, no offense to any personal trainers here today. But the way to get a holy life is you've got to go to the one who can give you a holy life, and his name is Jesus. You go to him. You go to the source of holiness. God is holy. The Bible tells us to be holy, Peter, for he is holy. Now, how do you be holy? You first got to know who Jesus is. You got to know he's the way. You got to put your trust in the way. You got to put your trust in the name of Jesus Christ. And then follow what he tells you to do in his word and in through the Holy Spirit. Yes. You think the Holy Spirit can follow this morning? I think so. I think the Holy Spirit was working before we got here today to prepare our hearts to worship because he's the way to the holy life that we desire. Now, he's also the only way to escape hell. Now, I, I kind of give a real quick understanding of what this congregation is. You love to worship Jesus. And I think because you worship Jesus, you know that there's a heaven. If you know there's a heaven, and if you're Bible readers, you know there's a hell. And people are dying and going there every day. As this brother's mother passed away and went to heaven this past week. 
We praise God that we know where she's at. And we can be together again someday in heaven. We know there are others that are dying and going to hell. In our communities. In our little community here in Morristown. They're dying and going to hell. What's going to fix that? The one, the way, Jesus. He's the only one who can fix that. Not a new mayor. Not a new governor. Not a new president. Not a new congressman. Anything else. Jesus is the only one who can fix our issues. He's the only one to rescue people from hell's judgment. Who goes to hell? I was on my way to hell until I met Christ. Every one of you who are not saved today, you are on your way to hell right now. Well, I'm a good person. I'm nice. I hold doors. I hold people's yards for free. I do this and that. I'm a nice guy. I give all kinds of money to the church. But if you do not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you are going to hell. Amen. And we don't want you to go there. We don't want you to go there. That's why Jesus came. He doesn't want you to go there either. That's why he came. If Christ didn't want people to go to hell, he never would have came. There's no need for him to come. If there's another way to heaven, there's no, for him to come. No, there's no need for him to come either. He's the only way to escape hell. He's the only way to get to heaven. And he's the only way to a holy life. That's the way. Now, it's exclusive. You know, I would love someday, and I'm not a good golfer either, Rick, but I love to play golf. But I have three kids. And I haven't played since 2015. Because all of my resources go to feed my kids. Alright? If you drive by my house today, uh, you'll find out that I got a big whole line in my yard of dirt. I had to replace my water line a few weeks ago. And it's Jackie's fault. <laughs> show up there and pay 20 bucks and go walk from Augusta National Golf Club. I've never been. Someday I wouldn't mind going just to see the beauty of it. It's an exclusive club. And some people get all upset about that. And I'm sorry, ladies. Right now, it's all me. I never understood why a woman wanted to go to a men's club anyway. Why? Just a bunch of men. Right? But it's the golf course that they want to play on. Right? It's the golf course. It's exclusive, though. It's exclusive. Heaven is exclusive. It's exclusive. But you can get there yourself. Only through Jesus Christ. Can't get there no other way. He's the way. He's the truth. What did Pilate ask Jesus? Question he asked him. Anybody know? He asked him, what is truth? That's what Pilate asked him. What is truth? Well, truth was standing right in front of him. Pilate didn't know that. Do you know that when Jesus was arrested, betrayed by the Jews and arrested, that Jesus was taken before the chief priest that day, Annas and Caiaphas? I don't know how that worked, having two, but the kind of one that got knocked out of power and the other put in his place. He stood before the chief priest of God that day, the Son of God, and they did not recognize him. When I understood that as a, as a younger man, and it stayed with me as I've gotten older, when I understood that, that terrified me that within our churches, there are people that are within our congregations today that do not recognize who Jesus is as being the truth of God. Some great prophet, some great teacher, some great preacher, some great miracle worker. To the chief priest, he was an arch enemy and they hated him. And they wanted him dead. And they sold, Judas sold him out for 30 pieces of silver to get rid of him. Because he wasn't the man he thought he was supposed to be. But Jesus is the truth. God is true. There are no lies in them. Jesus has never lied to you. God has never lied to you. And they neither would have ever let you down. They may not have answered the prayer the way you wanted it answered. But they have never let you down. They have never lied to you. And they can't 
Because God is true. And within him are no lies. Uh, Proverbs 12, 22 says, Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. It's an abomination to the Lord. So when someone asks you a question, give them the truth. Don't lie to them. I, I know as a, as, as a pastor, uh, for the last 15 years or so, you get those phone calls to, to go to that person's house or that hospital room and that person who's dying. And on the physical aspects, you know they're passing away. You know it's soon. One of our members years ago, we were in there with the family. While we're there, and she was unresponsive. And as we're there, she literally stopped breathing. She passed on the glory while we're in there. We weren't in there to, to work some miracle, to raise her back up from the dead. We weren't in there for that. Because we understand from the Word of God that it's appointed unto man once to die and after this to judgment. We're all going to die. That is the truth of God's Word. Do not be afraid of death unless you're lost. Then fear it every day. But you don't have to fear death. Because you trust Jesus Christ, you find that He's the truth. And He can set you free from your fears of death. No, I'm, as I mentioned earlier, I'm ready to go to heaven today. If we leave here today, go back home, and, and we don't make it, then you'll know where I'll be. I'll be in heaven. But we understand there's people that are lost today that need Christ, that need godly witnesses. And yes, I have been Hunter's coach, and yes, standing out, but we yell at Hunter like crazy. <laughs> yelling at my son like crazy, and I still got coach Angie, my son is soccer, and I've kind of stepped away from baseball now, and that's okay. But we, we just, that's just who we are. We don't yell mean. We're not mean. We just yell. To get their attention. And nobody in here has got kids. You don't yell at your kids either. I know that, don't you? I know you yell at your kids. Don't lie to me. Every one of you in here have yelled at your kids at some point in time. Even Gabby got yelled at. I know she did. My father-in-law was her pastor for many years. Now, John's not much of a yelling, but I bet he could if he wants to. Understand this. There's no lies in God. There are no lies in it. He will tell you the truth. And as the Bible says, the truth will set you free. Will set you free. Free from what? Free from sin, free from the penalty of death, and free from the judgment of hell for your sins. For I want to tell you the truth today, every one of us in this room today are sinners. Every one of us are sinners. That's an exclusive club, and we're all a part of it. Okay? You can say, well, it's also inclusive. Yeah, it is. As soon as we're born, we become in this aspect of sin. Yes, I understand that a baby, when they're born, they are very selfish. And selfishness is sin. Everybody say amen to that. It is. Now, I understand also this, that God understands that child is incapable and incapable of understanding right from wrong. If that child dies, that child is in Christ. I understand all that. I believe that too. But we are all selfish individuals. We are all born unto sin. But for those of us who believe in Christ and have put our trust in Him, we get something added on to our title. We are sinners who are saved by the grace of God, who have been forgiven, washed clean of the blood of the Lamb. That's who I am. I'm no way special. I'm not anybody amazing or awesome. But I know someone who is. His name is Jesus. He has saved my soul. Because he's the truth. He's the life. We are dead without Christ. I'm going to read a little bit of Ephesians here real quickly for you. Ephesians 2, uh, verse number 4, it reads this way. But God, <laughs> who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us, means made us alive. Together with Christ, by grace you are saved. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Jesus is the creator of life. 
He's in Genesis chapter 1 all the way to the end of Revelation 22. He is the creator and he is the sustainer of life. As a, Ezekiel got that vision of that, I don't know if it's really a vision or just an experience. I really, can, you really just can't comprehend what he saw there. That valley of dry bones. God told him, speak to these bones, prophesy to these bones. And they begin to rattle. Some horror flick happened there with Ezekiel that day. These bones begin to rattle and begin to come together and form up. And suddenly muscle began to come on them. Skin came on them. And they stood up a mighty army. But there's no life in them. Prophesied of the wind. Here comes the wind. <laughs> wind came upon them and they became living beings. I was born in my mother's womb in 1971 sometime. And I was born in 1972. See, I'll tell you my age today. I was reborn in 1981. I was born again by the grace of God. I had life breathed into me. And I became a new person. Was I made perfect that day? In the eyes of God, yes. In the eyes of God, yes, when I die, I will stand before Him as a redeemed, born-again believer in Christ, and I will not be cast away from Him because Christ took my judgment on hell. But now I still live in this sinful body. And yes, there are times I do get crusty. If anybody in here tells me you don't get crusty, times you're lying to yourself and you're lying to God. We get crusty. We do. We, we, we sin. But I have a sin alarm in me. That when I see him, and I apologize if I've ever run anybody here off the road. Because <laughs> I don't know everybody in here, but I know I've passed you on the streets of Morristown. And if I have not spoken to you at Walmart, I hate that place. <laughs> but I go there a lot. And I go in, and I go out. And I put blinders on. So if you see me out next week at Walmart, and I don't speak to you, that preacher, he's me. He's not nice at all. He didn't speak to me at all. Just to know that I'm trying to get out of that place as fast as I can. <laughs> the creator of life. The giver of life. He gave me life. New life. New life. If you've been born again, you don't talk about it. It's new life. He's also the giver of eternal life. I got that in 1981. Eternal life. I'm living right now in eternal life. No, this body will die someday. It's not going to last forever. It's not going to run anymore. It's not going to jump anymore. It's not going to breathe anymore. My heart will stop someday. My brain will stop working someday. My soul will live on forever. And then when Christ comes back, He'll raise His old body up from the ground, make it new, make it glorified like Christ, and there shall I ever be with the Lord. Eternal life. Do you have it today? You got it? Huh? You were singing earlier, let it be known you got your life. Don't be ashamed that you are part of an exclusive group of people. But don't be afraid to invite others into your exclusive family. We want others to have what we have. Wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it all be great for every seat in this place we feel that up there too and, and people sitting back here? Huh? Invite them in. They may not have what you have right now, but they come and they hear the gospel preached and then they get what you have. What joy there is in that? Yes. Come on. The Bible tells me that there is joy in the presence of the angels of God when one sinner repents. That happened one day for me. Huh? It did not do one. I made heaven rejoice because I trusted in Christ. Amen. But it wasn't just me that did it. Because I have learned over my uh, years of preaching that God drew me to salvation. God's the one who convicted me of my sins. God's the one who gave me the faith to believe in Him. And God's the one who saved my soul. So my salvation is really not anything that I did. He did it all. Because He's the giver of life. He's the sustainer of life. And He's the one who gives us eternal life. It's found only in Him. So if you want to live forever, you won't find it in some doctor here. You'll find it only in Jesus. Only in Him. If there's another way, then there is no need for Christ to die on that cross. It's a record of it. Just something for us to have a, an eyesight of what it looked like. 
If there was another way for you to get to heaven, there was no need for Christ to come and hang on that thing. No need for it. But he's the only way. He says, I am the only way. And I add the word only there because it's implied. The truth and the life, no man comes and the Father but by me. So we see the way, the truth, the life. And lastly, we see the promise. The promise. You have to go back up to verse number one. Uh, for the promise. It says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house. This goes back to your song you sung earlier. There are many mansions. Now, the word mansions is, you can get all tongue tied over that. Uh, we've got some big houses in our communities here in Morristown. Uh, it's not one of mine, okay? Mine's not going to be the big ones, all right? Mine's bigger than what I probably need because I have to take care of it. The more you got, the more you got to take care of, right? Understand this, if my mansion is only just my eternal body, I'll be satisfied with that. You know that? Just being in heaven is enough for me. Yes, Walking on the streets of gold, ah, I, 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 I don't need that. I just need Jesus. That's really all I want. To me, the greatest thing about heaven is that I will get to see Jesus. <laughs> that I'll get to be with Him. And I'll never, never, ever Take his name in vain again by sinning once more. Never will I. I won't have the ability to sin anymore. I won't ever get angry anymore. I won't ever get frustrated anymore. No, I won't ever do any of those things anymore than I've used to do in my life. I won't do anything of those bad things anymore. Because God will take all that away from me. And I'll be with him. He's the only way to the Father. The promise is he's the only way. He says, I'm going... If it were not so, in my father's mansions, if it were not so, I would have told you I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you into myself. So, read you on. Know, that where I am, there you may be also. Huh? You see that? He is the only way to the Father and you can know Him. You can have a personal relationship with God and His Son, Jesus. And Jesus says He's gone away. He's left. He was preparing the disciples for Him leaving. He was preparing the disciples for Him going back to heaven. And they will be left without their leader. They'd been with Him for three years. They left their jobs, their families, and they were flawless men. They knew He was the Messiah. Peter walked on water with him. They saw him raise the dead. They saw him turn one little young man's lunch into a feast for the whole group of people. 5,000 men plus women. And then another time, 4,000 men plus women and children. Amazing. They saw all these amazing things. They told them, I'm leaving. Going away. If I go away, you come back. I'm just going away for a while. To make a place for you to be with me for eternity. You can know him. He's gone away. But he is coming back. Everybody believe he's coming back? Do you live that way though? That's a hard question, isn't it? Do we every day do we live as if Christ could come back today? Now, right now, it'd be great, right? Here we are, we're preaching. Here we are, we're having a great worship time together. Singing praise to God. Praying on the altar. Great time for Christ to come back right now, right? Amen. Would be. Sure, it would be. It'd be great. But what if it's not today? What if it's tomorrow? And we're at work and we're frustrated and we're angry and we're mad. And we're ready to choose somebody out because they messed up. Are we thinking about Christ coming back then? Ooh, it's a little harder there, don't it? Huh? It's a little harder there because we, oh, wow, Christ came back today. I didn't thought about that. Because I got this deadline, I gotta I mean, I gotta get this stuff done before, before I get fired or lose my job or, or whatever. Or somebody takes it from me. All this pressure of life clouds our understanding that Christ could come back today. No, we don't want to be like the disciples were in Acts 1, where they watched him leave and they stayed there. And they just, okay, I'll just stay here wait. Huh? We don't want to do that. You don't know, don't just stand here, go. Go stay in Jerusalem until you're empowered from on high, and then go forth and preach the gospel. We live, though, as if this is our last opportunity to share the gospel with those we know are lost. Today, I don't know who 
who might be lost here. I don't know. God knows. God knows if you're lost today. He knows if, you're, if, if you die today, He knows you're going to hell. And that's why He sent the gospel to you today. He didn't send me. He sent the gospel to you today. He sent Jesus to you today to show you that you can have eternal life in Him. By simply trust and ask Him to save your soul and forgive you of your sins. Then lastly, He will take you to eternal life. Now, happened for your mother, brother, this past week. He came and took her to eternal life. He might come and take us all someday. All to eternal life for those who are saved, in a way. But he might come as individuals and take us individually away from each other to eternal life. But don't lose sight of the promise. It is eternal life. Eternal life. No longer will there be separations. No longer will there be those agonizing moments of going to the funeral home and laying our loved ones in the ground or in whatever we do with them. Those moments will all be gone. No longer agony and pain because the previous things have all passed away. Death will no longer exist. Grief, crying, and pain will exist no longer because those previous things have gone away. Gone, forgotten. Because we'll be living eternal life with Jesus. That's the promise. You can have that today. You can have it. If you simply call out to Jesus Christ and ask Him to save you. We'll go to the Lord in prayer and then we'll have an invoice and a time of invitation. And if you're lost today and you need Jesus, then don't come to me. You can come up here and I'll pray with you. And I'll help you in every way that I can. But the main source you go to is you go to Jesus. You go to Him. You can call, you can call to Him where you are right now. Don't wait for me to, to tell you when to come. Call out to Him right now you are and you can be saved because He is the way, the truth, and the life. Father, we thank You today. Thank You for the opportunity to share Your Word. Thank You for the opportunity to stand one more time and lift Your name up on high. We pray, Father, as Your Word says, if Jesus is lifted up, He will draw all men to Him. Father, draw, if it's Your will today, to draw someone to salvation today. Uh, bless His people. Bless uh, this congregation will be a bright light for you, Father. We thank you for this opportunity. God bless your people. In Christ, we pray. And amen. Let's stay. Stay the same. Just have